crowd. Number 15, Jack Hustaker. Jeff Hostel. Stadium sunny up here. A benign day. Wrong. It's cold and windy. Show factor could reach zero before games end as the 7-2 Oakland Raiders blow into the Meadowlands against the staggering Giants. They're now 3-6. and six. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg along with giant great Phil Sims. He returns to the Meadowlands. And uh, welcome, I might add. And you're looking for some welcome at somewhere. <laughs> Paul McGuire, uh, I think the Raiders will welcome that uh, running game possibility today. I think they love it. This win isn't going to bother them at all. you got the fourth best rushing offense in the National Football League going against the fourth worst rushing defense in football. Along with Harvey Williams in that backfield, I'm really looking forward to seeing this young man. Napoleon Kaufman, I, I just think he's going to be one of the great runners in the National Football League. Well, you know, quarterbacks can never elude or sidestep the controversy and every time you mention Sims in this town, they say, Hostetler, you've talked with him. Uh, what's going on inside the, the Raider quarterback? Well, he's done a good job this week all along downplaying this situation and on the outside he's remained very calm but I think we all know on the inside he wants to come in here today play a good game and show the Giants and the fans they made a mistake by letting him go and I can relate to that situation but Jeff Hostetler is playing with a team that has more experience more talent and depth than the New York Giants he has a chance to come in here today and play very well. Dan Reeves and Mike White in his first year, 59-year-old Mike Jack Rabbit White, they called him in his high school days growing up on the east side of the bay, and now the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. You see, uh, even though the sunny skies, a flurry or two racing through, Dan Reeves in his third season here is uh, the head man with the Giants. It's been a troubled year, three and six. Uh, free agency, as he told us yesterday, he was uh, blindsided by the impact of free agency. So many Giants gone. On the, the unrestricted route. Well, it's just two years later since Dan Reeves co has come here, and I tell you, you're hard pressed myself to look out there and recognize a lot of these players. Major changes, and really this offseason, they're looking at a lot of major changes again in this organization and team. One of the reasons why they, you know, you lose so many players because he said, you know, you come to it, you come to a situation where you know you're working with like 45 or 46. You have the option either take the win or defend, and that's I think that's the most important because you can def you can set up your strategy for the second half. Well, the Giants did win the toss, elected to receive. As you see, Jeff Jager trying to put a wrinkle in the football today, and he'll have some assistance just to keep the ball in place on the kickoff. You know, it really is funny because I know the people are out there looking and say, boy, it's a beautiful, sunshiny day there. Well, I'll tell you, folks, this wind is brutal. Najee Mustafa to hold it, as you saw Herschel Walker, the veteran, along with Tyrone Wheatley, the rookie from Michigan, back for the Giants. And a kick with the wind that sails through the end zone. And we'll have the touchback at the 20-yard line. There are flags down. It appeared the Raiders had a jump start on the kickoff. Might have been across the 30. Bay Brown getting ready to go to work, but uh, we may have a re-kick. I, you know, I, I think with this wind, if they put the ball back, uh, it doesn't make any difference. They're going to kick it out of the end zone again anyway. Offsides, number 46 on the kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. Tom White, the referee, not related to the Raiders' Mike White. It looks like the guy that's coming off sides is right here. You can see him jumps a little bit, a little anxious to get down there into this win and try to make a tackle inside the 20-yard line way off sides. A little anxious, huh? Just a little bit. <laughs> well, I think what it was is the wind was behind him. It made him a little quicker, Paul, so he got off the line of scrimmage. <laughs> The Raiders started the year low in the penalty mark, but they've uh, gradually been rising and now fifth most penalized. It took them four seconds to get a five-yarder today. <laughs> Mike White has done a superb job. Uh, one of the many disciples of the great coach of the 49ers, Bill Walsh, and a close friend. Seven and two. He's brought unity back to this uh, Raider camp. Well, he's done something a lot of people never thought would happen with the Oakland Raiders. He's gone in there and actually changed their offense. I mean, I didn't think I'd ever would say this. They're not a long ball point team, but now they're back to quick passing if they have the opportunity. Jager again spins it high with the win. Carries into the end zone, and you're right, Paul. Take it at the 20 anyway. 
And so Dave Brown, who uh, had his best ever passing day against Seattle last week, a yard shy of 300. And here's how they line up. Elliott, Jumbo, Bishop, William Smith, and Riesenberg on the offensive line. Brown has uh, the old Georgia running tandem of Herschel Walker and Rodney Hampton, the all-time giant rusher, Sherrard, and Callaway outside, and Howard crossed the tight end. When they go to three wide, Arthur Marshall played for Reeves at Denver comes in. First play from scrimmage, and Hampton stops forward for a yard, maybe two off the left side against the Raider defense. A defense that has more takeaways than any in the NFL. Smith, Ball, a budding superstar, Chester McLaughlin, and Pat Swilling already has eight sacks. Fredrickson, Beekert, and Jones, they're young, and they run. McDaniel and Lewis at the corners. Hoskins and Joe King for the injured Eddie Anderson at safety. In the nickel, James Trapp, who has uh, Olympic sprint speed, comes in. Second down nine. a couple, so it'll be third and seven at the 23. Greg Beekert uh, spearheading the defensive charge. Number 54 from Colorado. Phil, that was an audible, right? Because they're looking at Swilling. That's Jerry right. They Schoenberg. saw Pat's, yeah. Pat Swilling is always to the left of the offense, but right here you see him. He gets to the right, and one of the reasons the Raiders are going to put him on the right side today, they like to match up him against Doug Riesenberg, who's been a little injured and has had some trouble protecting the passer. Into the shotgun goes Brown for the first time. Hurt, hurt. Time, and now the scramble, and he can't elude Anthony Smith, 94. These Raiders, even the big linemen, they can chase down quarterback speed. Well, right there is what you call a coverage sack. As you as you watch the play, look at all the Giants receivers down the field. Nobody is open. Dave Brown has no place to go. Now look, look like right here. Look at the three receivers down the field. Dave Brown's looking. Nobody open. This is something you're going to see all day from the Raiders pressing the Giant receivers because they think they can cover a man-to-man -man anywhere on the field. Mike Horan, uh, left-footed kicker, into the win. That's a terrific kick into the win to Tim Brown at the 30. And the former Notre Dame Heisman Award winner returns at about eight yards to the 38, and the flag goes down. That was not a sack on the third down play. The Giants quarterback uh, Brown scrambling for a yard, so Smith did not get a sack on the play, and Brown and the Raiders wait for this call. And the uh, ever-present uh, illegal use of the hands, hands in the back block on a return. 46-yard kick into the wind by Horan. Wow. Boy, you got to put stars in Illegal block. Number 44, during the return, 10 yards, first down. Calvin Jones, the running back from Nebraska with the block. Uh, just take a look on the left-hand side of it. You're going to see the illegal block. There it is, number 44, right in the back. And when you hit someone in the back, that's Calvin Jones making the, making the block. They're going to call it. It's wide open. And the theory about the wind didn't, didn't work against that punt. Huh? Mike Rahan is, is very good. At, that's one of the reasons why he's punting here. He can handle the wind. The Hawks into the saddle, comes out throwing. With the wind to Brown, first down near midfield. Gain of 21. Well, that's a good job of Jeff Hosteller and this Oakland Raiders. What they do is they come out. You're worried about stopping the running game, so they come out with a play action. Philippi Sparks, very aggressive on the line. Let's Tim Brown go down the field, wide open between him and the corner and the safety back, Tito Wooten. Wooten, uh, who had a tough time last week. It's... Seattle when uh, he gave up a couple of scores. Something for the injured Vincey Glenn. The toss to Harvey Williams eludes a tackle and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Felipe Sparks able to get him out of bounds uh, near the line of scrimmage. Let's uh, look at the Raider offensive set. Jenkins, Wisniewski, the perennial all-pro. Uh, Dan Turk's been in the news with his uh, cut block. Gogan, a former uh, Dallas Cowboy, a part of that big offensive line. Williams and Fenner, the running backs. Brown and Ismail outside. Kerry Cash, the tight end today. Daryl Hobbs in the chief for a three-wide set for the Raiders. Second and ten. And the former 
Seahawk, former Bengal, is into Giant territory, a gain of five. The defense for the Giants have been too generous this year. Harris, Hamilton, Agnew, and Strahan up front. They're much lighter than many of the defenders around the league. Kroll, Brooks, and Buckley, the backers. Sparks and Randolph uh, are considered two of the better corners in the NFL. Campbell and Wooten for Vincey Glenn. Glenn out, and they miss him because of his leadership. Armstead, Seahorn, and Beeman are the extras that come in in long yarded situations. Third and five. Completes to Ismael, and it's a first down at the 40. That's a good throw, even though he's with the wind at his back. That ball is carrying toward the sideline. Still a very good throw. I was down on the field early in the game while they were warming up, and I watched Jeff Hostetler throw the ball to this left sideline. Did a very good job. Here you see Thomas Ray, uh, Randolph covering Rocket Ismael. Going to be on him almost every time today in third down situations. Man to man. Good job right there. Uh, uh, Rakeem Ismail getting open. His 21st catch of the year. He has a couple for scores. Harvey Williams having a banner year. And he's tackled by Jesse Armstead. And falls forward for a couple of year, yards. Worst uh, opening drive performance this season. The Raiders, surprisingly, despite their 7-2 and two record, have only a field goal out of their uh, previous nine uh, first possessions. Well, I think a lot of that comes from the fact they like to come out, and we heard Mike White say yesterday, they come out in a lot of formations. They want to see your adjustments, and they're pretty conservative early. They like to run the football, too. So scoring has, has not been a high priority for this team early in the game. Second and long, Hostetler fires incomplete to Darrell Hobbs. He was in traffic. Tito Wooten was over there to help out Thomas Randall. Well, there's one of those throws in, in, in by the receiver waiting for the catch. It's not going in there. I mean, you, you like Hobbs on this play here. He just sticks his arms out, Phil. He wasn't about to go for the ball. Watch where this ball ends up. Watch his arms. He just kind of reaches out. And he's not going to take that hit. He can see the defensive back to the outside. Watch this. Watch his hand. He stops. He sees him coming. I'm just going to lean in with my hands. I'm not going to put my body in there. Even though it would appear a clear third and nine, officially it's a third and eight. With Tim Brown in motion. Fetter into the flat. Hostetler. He can still scramble. And he has a first down on the dive at the 27. Phil, you know what I'm seeing here? I'm, I'm just watching Brown and Felipe Sparks, and I'm going to tell you something. Sparks is taking a shot at Brown every time he comes off the line of scrimmage. Here's Hostetter. He looks downfield. Now, he can't. He doesn't have enough time to see Brown, who comes open, and then he just takes off with the ball. He's thinking about throwing it to Williams, but Williams didn't even look at him. He had to keep it. Well, if you're, you're the giant defensive line, you see Dan Reeves there. He's, he's mad because they, they let Jeff break the pocket, stay in your passing, passing lanes, keep him in there, make him throw the ball down the field. Now, this is a giant type drive, chewing up a lot of time, mostly on the ground. It's Harvey Williams straight ahead to the 21-yard line. And Harvey Williams with 682 yards, part of the renewed running game with the Raiders. Yeah, the pirate treasure. they gone for the long bomb so often through the years without the complimentary running game buff this year. Well, the last time in the top ten, it was Bo Jackson's year. This season, fourth. It is a treasure. 138 yards a game, fourth best in the league, and Harvey Williams looking at a 1,000-yard season. Raider back hasn't done that since uh, Marcus Allen ten years ago. Williams. Straight down. Turns it. Running straight on. Thomas Randolph, finally Tito Wooten with a push out of bounds, another first down, nine more for Williams. Well, Dick, you talk about that Raider running game, and everybody says that the man that's responsible for it has finally got it going is Joe Bugle. Right there you saw one of his famous plays, I guess you would say, when he was with the Washington Redskins, the counter tray, the lineman pulling, the back taking that counter step, trying to get the defense to overreact and, and, and go the other way, and that was a good job right there by the Raiders. Tenth play of this opening drive. First down at the Giant 12. Williams again. And good defense. 
Jesse Campbell comes up to fill the gap from his safety spot. Michael okay. Brooks is the guy that made this thing work, though. Michael Brooks is in the backfield. Williams had no place to go. He fills the hole, fills the gap. It just enables the defensive back to Campbell comes in. Watch this. Look at 94. Brooks, he comes in. Bam, he takes on the blocker, Fenner, and just knocks him back into the ball carry. That, see, you should get credit for the tackle when you do something like that. Even though you don't, you're not the guy that makes it, you should get credit for it. Well, then the guy that makes it be mad, too, Paul, so you can't do that. <laughs> delay to Williams. And well read by the Giants. Maybe a yard gain as Michael Brooks again. Brooks, uh, you got to be linebacker tough, and how do you learn that as a kid? He said he had a special formula as you watch him. He was the last of 13 children, the eighth boy, and he said, when mom and dad left town, boom, my boys and my brothers would just slap me around, beat me up. He said, you got to be tough <laughs> oh. to survive. Brooks you, said, what'd you call him, Paul? That makes you the what? The slap child. You're a slap child. They said, you know, they, they just beat him up. They made him tough, and he is. I'll tell you, that is a man. Third down and a short 10. Stettler faking the Fenner into the end zone. Incomplete to Daryl Hobbs. There was the win. Hobbs was open. Stettler thought he had made the right lead, but the win carried it out of bounds. Well, he knew when he let that ball go that time, Jeff Stettler, he threw it perfectly. He put nice touch on it into the or with the win, gave his receiver a chance. The defender has no chance right there to, to make the interception. Just a little too far outside for Darrell Hobbs to make the catch. One of the things we're going to find out through the whole course of this game, as the win gets worse, there's not going to be much touch passing today. Do you think? Well, going downwind, I think you can, Paul. You can, you can throw it up there with nice touch and, and uh, give receiver a chance to catch it. Jeff Jager with a 30-yard attempt, knocks it through, and the Raiders' opening drive does produce three here at the Meadowlands. Still booing me. Uh, they turned <laughs> finally turned him around. That's right. That Super Bowl win, 21. But after that, it was all glory. Down to the goal line as the Giants get their second kickoff return. And Tyrone Wheatley, Michigan All-America, across to the 23-yard line. A long opening drive. Raiders lead 3-0. Some talk here that rumors that he might go to the University of Georgia, which he dispelled and said he doesn't like that at all. Doesn't make uh, Ray Goff feel any better down there in Georgia either. First down at the 23, Dave Brown gives to Rodney Hampton. And he's out to the 27, maybe the 28. Rob Fredrickson made the hit. You know, you talk about Reeves, though. It was one of funny yesterday. He's talking about he's, gonna, he's having his house painted inside. He said, and you know, outside of And outside. And there's two, two schools of thought. He says, down at the paint store, they're saying, hey, why would he leave? He's not leaving. He's having his house Paint painted. His house. That's right. Then the other guy on the other side of the counter says, he's getting it painted so he can sell it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you win? That's right. <laughs> Second down and five as James Folston comes in for Fredrickson at linebacker. 55 Folston. to close to the 30-yard line and thrown by the umpire. It uh, usually is not good news for the offense. Greg and Beekert made the tackle. That's the holding penalty. They put him back. You know, the one thing that's made this Raider defense, I mean, there are a lot of things that made the Raider defense uh, excellent this year, but it's made it even better than they were is the speed of the linebackers. The, I mean, these guys, when you talk to Pat Swelling and these guys, they say nothing but speed. Holding. Number 78, offense, 10 yards, second down. Greg Bishop, the left guard. You know, the uh, Not only uh, Speedy, but Young. Fredrickson is 24, Beekert's 26, and Jones is 26. Yeah, they're fast and they're young, and their backups, Folson 24 and Holmberg 24. Second and long after the 10-yard walk-off. Seven Holmberg and McLaughlin, 91. Four to three against Indy and lost the ball game in overtime. I'm sure that's in the back of Marino's mind. It is. He said, we're going to break another record and I'm going to win this game today. Third down and 15. The flag is down. Brown says, somebody get open. And throws low. Incomplete to Arthur Marshall. You got offside on the defense. You're going to get another play. Pat Swilling seemed to get a jump off his uh, right end position. As you look at the early scores today. Right there was a good example. You you saw the Giants anytime they get in third and long situations. Offsides. 
Number 56, defense, five yards, third down. Now I know why he has all those sacks. He cheats. <laughs> that helps. But in third and long, though, the Giants, uh, Dan Rees loves to get his quarterback moving outside the pocket to give him some extra time so he can go down the field and pick up these third and 15 and 20-yard situations. Third and 10 now. Again from the shotgun. Callaway right. Gerard and Marshall left. And down goes Brown. Slashing in was Rob Holmberg. And a flag with it. It appeared Holmberg took him down with his leg. Well, they're going to they're gonna say tripping against the defense, which is going to be a first down. But this is not Holmberg. Uh, his fault on this play. Holmberg, when he comes in, he just cuts. He sees Brown trying to move, and he gets almost, I think, knocked down, and his legs catch him. This, I don't, I don't think this is a good call. The, the one thing about this defensive line now, we're talking to Chester McLaughlin, is he said that, that it, and this, they, they go to the passer and catch the run on the way. Here comes 57. Here he comes from the outside, the blitz right there. Lance Smith, the guard, does not do a good job of getting out there quick enough, and there you can see he missed him, and he, he throws that leg out there. Watch right here. Oh, yes. Tripping. Yeah, that's, that's a triple. Number 57. Foul on the run. Both happen behind the line of scrimmage where the run ended. Will we force 10 yards? First down. I thought, I thought it was accidental that he was blocked in, but you could see that Holmberg actually stuck his leg out on the way by. It was a heads-up defensive play, except he got caught. Yeah. And the penalty mark-off, uh, they're trying to determine. Actually, they actually the penalty is one yard to the 24, but a first down because of the personal foul. play. Anthony Smith and others in on the stop. Joe King came up from a safety slot. Well, that was a big first down for the Giants with that penalty right there because one thing it does, it eats up some of that clock so you can get this first quarter over with and get that win behind you. So, no, that was a big first down for the Giants, that penalty for tripping. Rodney Hampton, now the all-time Giant rusher, four consecutive times, a thousand plus yards rushing to pass Joe Morris, Alex Webster, Ron Johnson, and Frank Gifford. Stop three yards back, and he's close to a first down out to the 33. Hoskins in on the stop, along with Joe King, the two safeties. Well, one of, one of the reasons you're not seeing number 53, Fredrickson of the Raiders, we talked about all their speed. They said he had a hamstring. He's, you see him there on the sidelines. He's trying to work it out. He's the one without the camera. The guy with the suit, the guy with the jersey. <laughs> he's uh, really blossomed into a sterling talent, the number one pick a year ago for Michigan State. enough. It'll be close. They marked it beyond the 34-yard line. Mike Jones, a free agent, picked as a running back out of Missouri and has become a starting linebacker for the Raiders. Well, right here, you see the Giants are to your left. They're going into the wind this way. The wind at this stadium always blows towards the locker rooms. And that's a situation right there. It's just another good example. What you do, third and short, give the, the impression you're going to throw the ball and have a run. But right here is the worst part when you, whoops, we missed it there. When you get down inside the opponent's 30-yard line going in the wind, it really picks up and it's hard to throw the ball or kick a field goal. Well, there's no snap and all kinds of action. Well, Jerry Ball must have seen something uh, on this play because he just takes off before the ball is even snapped. I mean, he was like he was going to get down into his stance and then he took off. Whether Hosteller got his hands underneath and he came back out or not, I don't know. Encroachment. I said Hostel for 93 proud. defense. I got yards. it. Hostel brought a wrong team. I'm sorry. So it's against the Raiders and their penalty yardage piling up here in this first quarter. That's uh, five penalties already for 35 yards. You see Jerry Ball in the backfield. I don't know what he saw unless he saw his own man making a move. You get that ball rolling, you really got <laughs> no moss gathering. Yeah, that's right. He's, I think he's listed at 325, but that's being kind. That's from the waist up. <laughs> so first and five from the 39. And Walker 
Just not able to get to full speed. Maybe a yard gain is Albert Lewis, the veteran cornerback, slashing in to help out Jerry Ball. You know why he didn't get the full speed? Because he ran into Jerry Ball. Jerry Ball hit him high, and Herschel Walker just stopped dead. The one thing I've noticed so far in this game, though, so Paul, is that the Raider deep in, defense is being very aggressive, crowding the line of scrimmage. They know the Giants are going to run the ball into the wind. They're trying to stop it. Here we are with a minute 30 to go in the first quarter. The Raiders have only had it once. Giants trying to chew up this first quarter and have the win advantage in the second. pass and he just never gets to the outside. That's what happened. The Giants fake that inside trap. You see Lance Smith pulling. Folsom has Rodney Hampton out of the backfield. He plays the run. Rodney Hampton gets open. Really a good first pass for the Giants and Dave Brown. They mark it at the 41 an 18 yard pickup for Hampton. Hampton and Walker behind Brown. That's Herschel Walker. To the 40. That's all. Jerry Ball the rest of the Raider crowd joining in. And in that crowd is Chester McLaughlin, number 91. He was picked to the Pro Bowl last year at uh, 25, one of six. So he's one of the top six. And many feel he might be top three now, if not the most feared defensive interior lineman in the league. And not a happy camper. Yeah, he was a little upset about you know his contract, but he signed a long-term contract. He said, that's my, that's my fault. But he's hoping that they're going to kind of tear it up and give him some more bread. He signed a five-year deal as a rookie. His value has increased dramatically. Final play, perhaps, of this opening quarter. Second and long. Brown just does get it. And the ball dies on him. The wind knocked it right down. Wide open was Chris Callaway. And uh, Boy, the fates of the uh, <laughs> Zephyrs here at the middle. <laughs> it's not funny, though. It I mean, is it funny. Watch what the ball does. Well, I mean, you don't think this is funny. You, if you've been out there, Dave Brown, you see him drop back. Good play action fake. He throws it's it out ball. there, and the wind catches it, and it just drives it into the ground. <laughs> Callaway, Callaway's waiting like a shortstop, waiting the ball goes away. Is this what you guys did when I was playing? You well, we, saw you, uh, we saw you in the pregame show, how you threw it. That's right. We're going to see that again, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Three seconds left in the quarter. Third down and eight. Early action again. And an interception by McDaniel if it counts. Terry McDaniel who has four this year. And finally out of bounds at the giant bench and another flag goes down. Dick, I've counted. There are one, two, three, four, five flags on their only wait, wait, ooh, how many more do we have? One, two, three, four, five. There's only seven officials. Two of those guys missed something. <laughs> there are three flags back on about the 18, 19 yard line. And there's an offside by McLaughlin, I think, or and, they had movement. And one beanbag. And one <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you, John, John Elliott, yeah, look at that. They keep a little uh, weight in there. But I don't know if Elliott was on the line of scrimmage or not. I mean, you're allowed a little leeway, but Jumbo Elliott looked like he was back off the line of scrimmage. But McLaughlin was offside. Now here's the official word from Mr. White. Both penalties against the Raiders. Offsides, number 91. Defense, that's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay third down. Illegal block in the back on Oakland. After the interception, that penalty is declined. Third down. Look at Chester McLaughlin, McLaughlin outside. You see him. Dave Brown again using that hard count, going on three on the snap, a count of three, and then draws the defense off sides. And you see James oh. Trapp blitzing from outside, getting a good shot on Dave Brown. Well, downfield, this is after the interception, but the illegal block had already occurred back down the field, about the 18 or 19 yard line. So that the illegal block was before uh, this run. Well, and the reason why the reinforced five yards. That is the end of the first quarter. Reason the Giants didn't take the other penalty, even though it's more yardages, then they would have had to give the Raiders the ball. They remember me here, though. Oh, they love you. I know they do. I've never seen, other than Marv Albert, anyone more adored in this city than you. <laughs> I could, I could, well, I'll show you later on. I mean, these yeah. people really love me. See, 
I, I will. The Giant fans are smart. They just proved it to us. Between uh, quarters, uh, the fans down below. <laughs> It was a reenactment of that draft day, 79. They were saying, who? There you go. <laughs> uh, I've got total control of these people. I think no. they were showing how sophisticated and knowledgeable they were when you stuck your face out That's there. That's right. What's the delay they here as we start Ooh. the second quarter? The Giants are at the Raider 34-yard line, third down and three. Raiders scored on the opening possession a 30-yard field goal, Jeff Jager. And uh, even though it looks warm, the temperature is around 40. The chill factor presently around mine, uh, plus 10, but will drop as this day wears on. he was going to do with the ball after he got it. Here comes Swilling from the backside. Watch this. You want to see some hustle? Back inside. Knock the ball out. Then Anthony Smith. Watch this. Nice dance, Anthony. Here you go. Whoa, I'm not going that way. Now I'm going to go back over this way. Then they're going to kill me right about now. Looks like he was running on skates. Swilling uh, raises the anger of Reeves. His ninth sack. Stop the Giants on the forced fumble, Pat Swilling, and it's Oakland at the zone 40 off play action. Hostetler fires the ball complete to Tim Brown. It'll be a first down at the Giant 48-yard line. Let's go back to the turnover. The daily double for Swilling, uh, or trying for it. He gets the sack, and uh, Smith gets the recovery. Well, let's watch uh, Pat Swilling here. One of his favorite moves is to spin inside. Doug Riesenberg's probably expecting that. He crosses him up, goes outside. Then we see Anthony Smith pick up the ball and do a, a really bad imitation of Deion Sanders running with a, with a fumble. Uh, Doug Riesenberg, we're not we're, you know, making fun or anything, but Swilling said, I'd love to play over this guy. Well, he knew Doug had been hurt the previous couple weeks and he thought he could take advantage of that uh, that situation and he has so far today. Napoleon Kaufman is in the backfield. He gets the toss and this guy's explosive and down to the 40-yard line. Cut down on the tackle by Tito Wooten. Now this is the guy we talked about at the beginning of the show. I said you got Harvey Waves and, and this guy, Napoleon Kaufman. But not only is he quick, I'm maybe one of the fastest guys on the team, but look at the arms on this guy. This guy is built. I mean, he has a lot of power. And you're going to see a little example of it right here. When he sees the hole, he gets to it. Don't try to bring him down with one arm. You're not going to do that. You're not, Paul. And the best way to describe him is instant speed. As soon as he touches that ball, he's at full speed speed right away. You just saw his arms. That wasn't a leg. That was an arm. Second down and two. Fake to Kaufman. Hostetler steps up. Goes deep. Between Gus, the real smart quarterbacks here do that. I didn't know that. That was an excellent throw by Jeff Hostetler right there. Stepped up, and that was the important thing. He stepped up, got a lot of momentum behind the ball and threw a strike. Boy, he, I mean, he fired that ball too far. I mean, you, you know, I'm, I'm making a little light of it, but he had to put some stuff on it. He did. He did a good job. Didn't let the wind get a hold of it. Threw a good a good spiral for throwing in that part of the, of the field, and that's why Tim Brown had a chance to get out there and catch it. 60 yards and three plays. Jagers try for point, and it's 10 0. Three plays after the turnover, a 40 yard shot from Haas to Ismael. And Hostetler has returned to the Meadowlands. Ismael with his third touchdown, 40 yards from Hostetler. They convert the turnover. 10 0. Oakland. Look at this kick die in the wind. One of the up men. Kozlowski takes it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Well, let's look and see how Jeff Hostetler got Rocket so wide open, not Tim Brown, Rocket. Right here, you're going to see him. He's going to go down the field and run the post. But the key is Andrew Glover comes up the field, gets this safety here, Jesse Campbell, to stay there. Now there's no help back in the middle of the field. You see right there, the tight end gets up, takes the safety out of the play. Nobody in the middle. Jeff Hostetler does a good job of leading it out there. Here's where the Rocket puts in the afterburner right here. And a boom. When he's out, he's got already got him beating the ball. Just hangs up there perfectly for him. 
First down, Giants trailing 10 0 at their own 41. Brown to the sidelines. Callaway, tough catch, pulls it in. Terry McDaniel on the coverage, nine yards. Well, Dave Brown told us yesterday when you get the wind behind you, you almost feel a little pressure in the stadium because you know you got to get down there and score a couple points when the wind is behind you. Right here, you're going to see a play action. And one of the tougher throws to get to complete this stadium on the sideline, Chris Callaway doing an excellent job of grabbing his hands and pulling did it. You, did you feel that pressure when you, the few times you fell behind late in your career, that you had to make hay while you had the wind at your back? Absolutely. A lot of times you felt like it was a 30-minute game, Dick. You had to make points when you had the wind behind you. Brown with a pump fake, wanted to go long. Has a man open, Walker, complete at the 15-yard line. Joe King made contact. The play down at the 15 to match Walker's number 34 on the play. Watch Dave Brown right here. It's a pump and go to the outside to Herschel, but he makes sure the safety doesn't get over there. He almost waits too long to get it out there and underthrows it. Herschel comes back and makes a good catch. Watch the hook and go right there. Catches Derek Hoskins coming up looking for the short pass. I can recall a few years ago hearing uh, you talk to Brown about that. You've got to look left on that play to look off the safety. First down at the 16, they mark it. Trailing 10 0. Tyrone Wheatley. Not much there, no gain. Hey, all right, go again. Well, the Raiders defense inside the red zone, inside the 20. How good is it? Been? 27 times the opponents inside the 20, only seven touchdowns. Paul, you were running better this week. I like that. Well, I got a, I, I lost a little weight over the last yeah. week, and I'm starting to move better in it. Third best in the league behind San Francisco and Tampa Bay, and they stuffed the run on first down. Play action. Brown, a wobbler. Incomplete. Out of the end zone to Sherrard. Tell you, this defensive line, you know, we were talking to McLaughlin, and, and, and it's obvious with, with Ball and these guys, their job, because of Floyd Peters, just says, here's a ball that's out of the end zone. I mean, Sherrod is, is, is way out. They didn't have to push him. But the defensive line said they love this defense because what they do, it's the same as Kansas City. They go to the passer, and if the run happens to get in the way, we'll go ahead and take it. But their main job is to take their lane and get to the passer. And Pat Swilling ready to tee off. Number 56 on the right side of that defensive line. Third and 10. To give it to Marshall on a handoff. And Raiders saw that one coming. Maybe a yard gain as James Trapp made the stop. Field goal come, unit comes on on uh, fourth and very long. Dan Reeves has really got to be disappointed. That play action pass they ran, Dick, on second down. They got exactly what they wanted. The defense came up expecting run. Mike Sherrard was uncovered. They're down in there tight. Dave's just got to do a good job of getting rid of the ball quicker. He waited too long. That's why he didn't get it in the back of the end zone. Now, Luisa, a 32-yard attempt. Uh, he had a long one in the final seconds at Seattle that would have won it for New York last week. Thrills this one with a win, and goodbye plenty. So the Giants are on the board with 10-31 remaining in the first half. He is Hostetler ready to resume his role. Snooping around yesterday, found out that in all that controversy, there were times when Hostetler would hide in one of the towel bins and rollers and put towels over him, and they, one of the guys would wheel him out in the parking lot so he wouldn't have to face the press. Huh? Oh, that well, happens it, here? Oh, yeah, and Simpson would walk out and talk to him all. He says, I don't know why Hostetler's yeah, playing yeah. the guys. I'm not. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I would want to get in that laundry basket and just to avoid the press. Sometimes they can be mean, but... Wow, look at this. Dalwiza with the win. Out of the end zone. Almost That's got three. 81 yards on the fly. He almost got a three points here. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> must. I got a field goal. They'll take anything, won't they, those kickers? A oh, reminder that tonight an old new mad about you. Their own 20. way to an 11-yard gain. 
umpire Jim Duke hit the deck. Here's something the Raiders can do now they couldn't do last year. They bring in two tight ends, two backs, one wide receiver, hand it to Harvey Williams. Everybody knows they're going to run, and he still runs it right up the middle for a first down, just overpowering the giant defensive line. Well, the Giants are playing at Canadian football. They got 12 guys. One would have to be in stripes. <laughs> well, that was a mean whiplash fall that Duke took, but he stays in there. He's tough. That's the toughest officiating position in all of sport, I think. Umpire in football NFL. Out of the grass, continues and slides at the 37, and the flag goes down. This flag came from way downfield. And the Raiders are saying... Holding on the Giants, that's yeah. what they're saying. Well, they, yeah, they're saying that. But the Giants, but Ray Agnew saying, wait a minute, hold on a second, maybe not. Well, there was no pass, so that changes the call. Illegal contact, number 23, on the defense, while the quarterback was still in the pocket. Five yards, first down. You know, I'll tell you, the, the, the reason people are booing is when you, when you see this is because here's the illegal contact on the rocket on the outside. That's illegal contact. Well, that's also holding. But the thing about it is that Hosteller was running, and the flag came after he was hit. So, I mean, you say, well, he was still in the pocket. A little late getting it out, that's all. Nevertheless, first down at the 36 for the Raiders. The ball blew, blew away. <laughs> They come out with four wide receivers here, Phil. That's a formation on first down in your own territory you don't see often uh, from the Raiders in past years. Well, this year, Mike White said his contribution to this offense is formations. He comes up with these new formations every week, and they're probably doing this, spreading it out just to give Harvey Williams a little more room to run. tackle on the corner by Felipe Sparks, probably as underrated at the cornerback as uh, any in the NFL. Sparks number 22. Well, your relationship between uh, Sims and Hostetler, it, it couldn't have been all buddy-buddy in your years here. No, of course not. You know what happens, like it does in a lot of positions around the league, when you start competing the job for a job, you both want it. It has to uh, strain your personal relationship, and of course, we, we had our tough moments here, both wanting to be the starting quarterback for the Giants. I mean, you didn't go to dinner. Second down and eight. All tacklers and falls across the 40-yard line to the 41, where it'll be third down and five. Well, it was hard to go to dinner, Paul, because both of us, neither one of us, wanted to pick up the check. They're like, we're like you, <laughs> so we didn't go out that much. But, 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 but really, what happened is, is that things were pretty easy. We got along pretty well. But then in 1990, he comes in, leads the team to the Super Bowl. He gets a taste of what it's like to be the quarterback for a good football team, and he wanted that to continue. And of course, I wanted to get back in there and do my thing again, and that's when some of the trouble started. Yeah, well, people say this is a game, but this is a business. It's a great way of life, and you always try to make it better, and that's, that's one of the reasons why it's so competitive. Brown lined up in the backfield, comes in motion on third and five, and they dump it in the flat, the Fenner. Fenner hit at the 44, short of the first down. Just as they bring on the punting game to follow that through, I think that... The Raiders are in the fight. Yep. They're arguing whether they like Sims or Hostetler. That's what's happened. The, uh, just, to, just to underline it all, that uh, I think there's this uh, noble view by fans. They want everyone on the team to be close and tight and everything else. But in uh, in a highly competitive position like quarterback, you are the star of the team. There's no question. That's the most important position on the team. You don't want somebody else to take your job. Well, absolutely not. And I think Paul was describing it yesterday. Paul, you did a good job. There can only be one quarterback in a football team. It's not like a wide receiver where you get a chance to come in and be part of the team on third down situations and things like that. But quarterback, it can only be one, and that's why that's why we did have confrontations and it was such a controversy. Look at that ball die and then bounce laterally and out of bounds at about the 
And the reason Paul has, finds this so humorous is as a kicker, he knows how, how ridiculous you feel. Well, I, you know, he and he's doing his best. I mean, take a, take a look at this kick. First of all, he has to go for the ball. He's trying to hold the ball low, and he got it a little bit too high, so the wind catches it, and look what it does to it. It just takes it downfield. It's like about a 15-yard kick if he got that much. And the throat in the Denver game, he's playing today with a hand bone, left hand broken in three different places. He's the human ice bag. First down and play action for Brown. Plenty of time. No one open. Great coverage by the Raiders. And he has to throw up sidelines and maybe a yard gain as it goes to tight end Howard Cross. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm looking at Sherrod go across the field like he wasn't even in the pattern, Phil. I mean, he just jogged across the field. Brown's looking for him, and he's not even trying to get open. Let me, let me show you this thing. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Now, here's here comes Sherrod. Watch what he does. He goes across the middle. Look at this. Look, I mean, he's not like he's not the pattern. Well, he's looking for an open spot right there. That's what it's designed for is for Mike Sherrod to go across the field and find that open zone. It was not there. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he slowed down. line because these guys are on their way to the quarterback and if a run happens okay but let's get to the quarterback first they're only one off the lead with 29 coming in well the problem here this is a good job by the giant offensive line they keep them out right here dave had a chance to go down the field at first but his first and second dairy receivers are both covered nowhere to go with the football mike Corrin with a remarkable kick into the win now will have the advantage of a following win Sends a whirly bird toward Brown at the 28. And it's to the 42-yard line. Leading 10-3, the Raiders, five left before halftime. Gold and a 40-yard Hostetler to Ismail touchdown pass. The 10 for the Raiders, 32-yard field goal answer from Brad DeLuiso for the Giants. The Tim Brown talking about he is the chairman of camaraderie, and he said last year it was ugly in his uh, words. He said it was black against black, white against white, black against white, you name it. He said we have our Thursday night function. We might get nine or ten guys, but this year it has changed dramatically. They're all showing up, and it's the thing they have to do to get these guys together and iron out all of the problems that they have, but it also was coach against player. But it also helps now when you're seven and two. It makes all these meetings and the team camaraderie and the chemistry is all, as Barry Switzer said, it's always better when you win. Williams for five yards out to the 46-yard line before Michael Brooks and others can get him down. Under five minutes left in this first half. Dick, you know, I'm looking at Fleepy Sparks number 22. He's talking to everybody. I mean, he's got something to say. We see him um, um, any time that Brown comes out of, out of the backfield or comes off the line of scrimmage, Fleepy Sparks is, is hitting him. But now he's talking to Lyman. He's mad. He's drawing man coverage, it appears. He goes wherever Tim Brown is headed. That's a compliment to him that he's taking the best Raider receiver. The 240-pounder from North Carolina is close to midfield, about uh, two yards shy of a first down. When you're talking about a 240-pounder, what did McLaughlin say to us? You know what I hate? When they get third and one, third and short. Oh, give me the, put me in the back. I'll run the ball. I can yeah. run the ball. Put Jerry Ball in front of me, and I'll run. You said, well, wait a minute. Phil said, but, but a ball might want to run. He said, I don't care. I'll block for him then. Let him run the ball. <laughs> but I want to get a first down. There's no reason why a professional football team shouldn't be able to pick up third and one. Well, this is the time he'd like to be in there. He went to Clemson, too, and another guy uh, schooled there named William uh, Refrigerator Perry. You maybe got the idea a long time ago. way for what appears to be 
a first down. The Giants had him, but he was able to slither away from Keith Hamilton. He got it. He got it. And this is all Harvey Williams because the blocking was not that great up front. The defensive line got tremendous penetration, but watch this. He stopped, but he leans forward, and he picks up the first down. Excellent running. Clock running at the 313 mark here. There's Chester McLaughlin. Wouldn't he be something? We asked, well, you know, the fridge was around 315, 320. What do you weigh? Yeah, that's right. You didn't have know. an answer for that, did I don't know. I don't know. That's right. He said it doesn't matter what you weigh as long as you're playing well. And he's playing pretty well. Hostetler out of the backfield of Williams. Boy, he ducked his head, saw Felipe Sparks coming. And Sparks makes the tackle. He was a better high school Sparks uh, athlete than um, football in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. What a high school team. Darren Woodson and Felipe Sparks were on the same high school team. He went on to junior college, played forward in basketball at 5'11", a McDonald's All-America star. There's Sparks another free agent. Okay, maybe on the same pro team with him, too. Yeah. <laughs> this year. <laughs> well, it's an interesting situation here. So many free agents after this giant season. Second and oh, nine. Oh, oh, oh. Caught from behind by Jesse Armstead. No, it was uh, Jamal Duff, 96, a uh, rookie from San Diego State, a sixth-round pick by the Giants. He just stepped right over Randolph, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And I'll tell you, Jamal Duff, this is a guy the Giants really like. He reminds them a lot of Charles Haley of the Dallas Cowboys. That brings us to the two-minute warning. The Raiders driving with the lead. This NFL News, that's coming up at halftime. it off to Williams. First down and more to the 31 yard line. The tackle by Mike Kroll. I'm going to ask one question to Phil. The, Ra the Raiders will now get the ball in the second half, okay? When this thing gets back. If you're the Giants, you have the choice to defend the goal. Would you kick into the win? So you, you, or, do you want to win in the fourth quarter? Would you do that? Well, it depends on what the Raiders do right here. If they score, I would go ahead and take the win in the third quarter, try to get back in the game and see if you can force the issue for the fourth quarter. Goes Hostetler in this direction. He threw his 40 yard pass to Ismail. He gives the Napoleon Kaufman who bounces off tacklers. And then the second wave brings him down. And the Raiders will spend a timeout with 1 16 remaining in the first half. The first four years here with the Giants with uh, Phil Simms at quarterback, he didn't throw a pass. In fact, in that first Super Bowl year, the Super Bowl 21 year, he said he blocked a punt, caught a pass, and ran the ball before he ever threw it. Uh, that's right. I know. He was also getting on me about in 1986 on a Monday night football game. We're playing the San Francisco 49ers. He's wide open on the left sideline in the end zone for a touchdown. I'll overthrow him. You were mean to him, weren't you? I didn't do it on purpose. A <laughs> yes, touchdown you pass did. now. You did it on purpose, and we know. I'd, I'd throw it at anybody for a touchdown pass. Hostetler and the Raiders trying to improve on their seven-point lead. Right to your right, to your right. Four wide receivers. <laughs> guns it, incomplete, and that's the wind again coming in this direction. It just dies, and uh, Tim Brown, even with those good hands, unable to pull it in. Felipe Sparks is, is, is on him, talking to him, but the one thing about it I'm noticing now with the receivers, we saw it uh, earlier in the first quarter, when the ball is coming, you can't wait on it. You have to come back and attack the ball. Watch Brown looking. He's going out and reaches his hands out. The ball dies. So you have to come back to the ball. You could see right away, though, the nose of that football was down. And that, that's one thing you can't do as a quarterback. You've got to keep the nose right. of the football up going into the wind. Hostetler 7 for 10 in this first half. Third down. Incomplete. Brown worked to one way and Hostetler through the other. Well... Felipe Sparks again is on Brown, and he's not letting Brown go anywhere. Brown is, I think he's getting a little frustrated. Tim Brown, what happens there? Jeff Hostetler throws it down the middle. He has a read route. He has the option to do what he wants. He's going to go down the middle, and he goes, no, I guess I'll stop and hook it up. Jeff thinks he's going down the middle, throws it down there. Could have been an interception. It appeared that Brown knew that he made the wrong choice immediately. Now here's an interesting dilemma. As the Raiders call time, you're at the 31-yard line of your opponents, but you're into a win. You might as well be at midfield here in terms of a field goal. From this spot in the practice, uh, no kicker came close to delivering a field goal. 
you just go for it on fourth down. Why not? I mean, they're, you, if you kick a field goal and you miss it, they're going to get it seven yards further up the field, okay? Because it's now where the ball is put down. So you, you've got a fourth and ten. Why not go for it? It's as good as a punt. These people at home will say, these, these announcers must be crazy. I don't see any wind. Look at there was no hardly a, a movement at all of those streamers on the goalposts. Well, Phil was down on the field earlier with a dress on, and it was yeah. blowing all over. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. Raiders today, I will say this, so guys, so far, Jeff has done, Jeff Hosteller has done a very good job of managing the win and throwing into it. You know, a great example, that long touchdown pass, and he's using his experience to show you with the win what he did and against the win what he's doing there. Seven for 11 passing. It's fourth down. I like to call here. Go for it. Fourth and 10. Costello goes for it all. Hobbs is out of bounds. Daryl Hobbs out of bounds. Did not get both feet in. Yeah. And there again, just enough breeze to fly that ball wide. That ball does not come out of his, his hand as clean as he like, but Hobbs has Jason Seahorn beat. You see the ball, the little wobble, hangs up there. He's not able to come down in bounds with it, but Hobbs has him beat for the touchdown, and Jeff knows it. Jeff, oh, who, uh, I'll tell you, that thing on his hand is ugly. You know that, that oh. thing? He walked in that meeting yesterday with that. that he broke that, uh, the bones in three spots if on that If you look hand. at your ring finger of your left hand and up into the hand, that bone, that carpal bone, broken in three different spots, and yet here he is playing a week later in the cold. So the Giants now with a minute plus remaining, trying to get something on the board. The blocker has a block. Can't get away from oh. Albert Lewis. Did Lewis do a great job? He is the only guy on this side of the field, Albert Lewis. If he gets by him, Herschel can use his speed to go down that sideline for a big game, but Albert Lewis does not go for the fake. Phil, Herschel makes 27 moves and doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> now, first of all, Albert Lewis is the only guy out here. Watch it. And then blocked by Jumbo exactly. Elliott. Good Look job here. right there. Shake and bake it. And Albert Lewis, it's like when you're done, I'm going to tackle you. Are you done shaking? Yeah, it looks like a Harrison Ford movie there. You know, you can throw that <laughs> swashbuckle stuff out. Look at that right there. You can see uh, from that shot that Albert Lewis is the only guy on the right side of the field for the Oakland Raiders, and, and what a good job of stopping Herschel Walker right there. Giants uh, have two timeouts left, spending one here, and Albert Lewis, the savvy all-pro, formerly at Kansas City, just makes the play for short yardage. That play was only worth four yards. So you know, you think you really have a feeling like you're watching Albert Lewis look at him, and it's like, are you done? Yeah. Are, right. are you done moving around? There's a, this guy's a great corner. Great at Kansas City and great here. From the Giant 35 with 53 seconds left in the half. Short of the first down at the 40. Brings up third and one. Giants aren't going to use a timeout here. Hope they can pick up a, a quick first down. You got two. Why not take one here and get yourself settled? Brown under a lot of pressure. Throws incomplete. Not close to Callaway. Well, Brown had to throw the ball because Ball, McLaughlin, and Swilling uh, were all there. Everybody right there just pushing the giant pocket. If you're the quarterback, the one thing you do not like is people getting defensive linemen in your face. Look at this. All of them giving too much ground, and mm. Dave Brown takes it to the head. And I said ball, but it was Andre Bruce who was in there with the McLaughlin. I mean, you, I mean see that? Why don't you take – you have two timeouts. It is third down and one. Why don't take one of those timeouts, get yourself a play instead of hurrying up for what? So with 31 seconds left, the uh, Giants call time as Horan ready to punt. Paul, in those kind of situations, there, third and one, not a lot of time left. I always like to call, let's run the football, get the first down, call the timeout, go to the sideline, and then try to go down the field. And really, I thought maybe they had that called in the huddle. That's what they were going to do. But going down the field like that, the linemen are just not ready to protect and keep you out long enough. Oh, wait, he's second-guessing the coach, you know. <laughs> now he's second-guessing Reed. Well, what's what's new? I always yeah, did it as a little later. Now, are we? Yeah, let me, wait, let me get this straight. Did uh, Parcells? 
Ted Sims or was it Reeves? <laughs> I think it was Reeves. Oh, that's no. right. But, but you've got to understand something. It was because of uh, a couple of things. One, the salary cap. And the other was Two, his injury. He, the other one, he just, no, he didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> no, the salary cap, he didn't like it. No, that's, that's right. not true. The, and the other was they weren't sure about your injury. Whether I mean, that's the, what they tell us. They were not sure that they can uh, afford to waste that kind of money on a guy that's old and may not be able to recover from an injury. That sounds like they're talking about you. Yeah. Well, that happened to me, too. Yeah. That was without a sour cap. <laughs> Back to the seriousness of this occasion. Final seconds, 10-3, and Horan's biggest role here is to get the ball off, not get it blocked. Well, the Raiders don't put any pressure on. And look at this. Wow. One. Like a cannon shot. <laughs> Halfway into the other end zone, and he kicked it from the 33-yard line. That's 60 16. yards plus to the distance behind the center. Why do you... You don't really believe they let you go because of the cap and you were coming off shoulder sur surgery then, huh? No, I do believe the, the cap had a lot to do with it. Uh, I think the team was caught in a situation, Dick, and we talked about this yesterday. We were losing players off an 11-5 team. We lost five good free agents. Uh, they were going to have trouble getting underneath the salary cap. Why would they keep me? They figured, well, Dave Brown's the quarterback of the future. That's when they made the decision. Well, let's just make the separation right now. Let Dave take over the team, and maybe in a couple years, we'll be ready to compete again and, and, and win a win a title if possible. Raiders with a kneel down, the final play of this first half. Well, it's, although the Raiders seem to be very much in control, did uh, most of the positive things, it's still just a touchdown game. Mike White's Oakland club trying to go 8-2. and two, Already the third best record in the NFL, leading the hometown Giants 10-3. to three. So the end of the first half, the only touchdown into the wind as Jeff Hostetler, the former Giant, with a 40-yard strike to Rocket Ismael. I'm sure that'll be one of the many highlights that you will see. And yet had only 72 total yards in that first half. Well, one thing that sticks out in my mind that first half, the Giants, I think we all agree, they do not have as much talent as the Oakland Raiders. But they had a couple opportunities for touchdowns. They did not take advantage of them. And I think they could be, well, they could come back to haunt them in the second half. I think the one thing that Hosteller is doing that Brown is not doing, and that's getting rid of the ball right now. He's, he's Even if it's the outlet guy, he's getting rid of the ball. Brown is spending too much time back there, and that's why he's had three sacks. And it's interesting, into the win, we talked about how devilish it can be, and yet Hosteller, it appeared when it left his didn't you think that ball was going to be long, the touchdown to Ismael? As we all sit here, I thought that ball is at least <laughs> five or ten yards overthrown, but it was perfect. Really, I think the experience factor played in that. He knew it, so he threw it a little farther than normal. The wind knocks it down right in the hands of Rocket for the touchdown. Well, I think one other thing, too, and if the Giants are going to try, if they're going to win this football game, obviously they can't run the ball. They better throw it. Hostetler uh, with the touchdown pass, the difference in the game, and uh, his jersey clean while Brown sacked three times. This, this is kind of interesting right here. As uh, Harvey Williams, uh, under his average of uh, 4.7 this year, and uh, Rodney Hampton all but shut down. I'm sorry, Dick, what I was talking about, the Raiders have elected to kick the ball into the wind, so they want to try to hold on to this lead if they can so they can have it to their backs in the fourth quarter in case they need to come back and score or kick a field goal to win. Leave it in the defense's hands here in the third quarter as uh, Jager hits a little run hopper, and again, Kozlowski returns the kickoff, and a good job again. He's all the way to the 49 of the Raiders. Well, the Raiders trying to kick the ball underneath the wind, but Brian Kozlowski does a good job, a smart job, of picking it up and running with it. And it, you know, your your kick your kickoff team is not ready to defend runners when they get it this quick. You see him right here going in there slow, trying to kick the ball low, keep it under the wind. I tell you, he kicked it as hard as he possibly could. And he really did. I mean, it wasn't like a pooch kick or anything. He kicked it as hard as he could. Now you depend on the defense, and you hope it doesn't backfire on you. Callaway left and Sherrard to the right. Sherrard saying, hey, let's throw the ball longer more often. He's out to the right side, the leading catcher this year with 33 for the Giants. Cross in motion, the toss to Hampton. Good block on the corner, but a flag is down. As Hampton makes five, will it count? Anthony Smith and Albert Lewis collaborate on the stop. Well, you're going to have holding because Jerry Ball already called it. He called it himself. If he'd have had a flag, he'd have thrown it. 
Jerry Ball said, that's holding. He went over and told the Giants bench they were holding me. Jerry Ball, the former coach, Archell, said he's as quick as a holding. hiccup and square as a peg. Number 61, <laughs> 10 yards, first down. That's square, a ball that's square. Well, I'll tell you what, he does get off the ball. This guy, you know the, you know the Jerry Ball, you know what he played in college? What? Running back. He's gained a little weight since then. A little. I think. A little. Yes. He's a freshman fullback at SMU, but they quickly got other ideas. Yeah. I didn't say for how long. Nice catch by Mike Sherrard there, twisting back to reach the ball. And Rob Fredrickson, who left the game with a hamstring early, has returned for the Raiders. Well, it's a good job of Dave Brown right here, seeing the single coverage backside. Right away makes the decision. Pre-snap, Mike Sherrard a little behind him. Does a good job of holding on. There's another one of the guys that's not a very happy camper here. He'll be a free agent at the uh, end of the year. Schooled under Jerry Rice at San Francisco a couple of seasons. Second and one. Wide open is Walker. Check that uh, with a penalty. It was second and 11, not second and one. And uh, that will bring uh, the Giants third down and five. We're right there, even on a three-step drop. Dave Brown was under pressure. Jerry Ball came through quick, and if it, Dave would have held on the ball just a second longer, Jerry Ball would have been in there for the hit. Oh, they looks as if they're double-teaming McLaughlin, and that means Ball's going one-on-one, -on -one and he's having a field day. Yeah, these Raider defensive linemen, they ought to give some of their money to Chester because you can count on one thing every game. Everybody is going to double Chester McLaughlin. It was the slot on the play, and he gets 19 yards. Good job by Dave Brown of picking out the open receiver. What you have up top, they're trying to clear it out. Arthur Marshall comes underneath. James Trapp, not close enough. Dave sticks it in there. Arthur Marshall, but look where this pass is thrown. I mean, this, this is a bullet. He throws it right between two defenders. They knock each, each other off, and then Marshall picks up the first down inside the 25. Marshall, another Georgia, former Georgia star, as uh, home state of Dan Reeves, their coach. Dump off pass and complete to the tight end, Aaron Pierce. Uh, Pat Swelling was right in Brown's face, and, and Brown just tried to just lob it over top of him. And it, first of all, in this wind, you're not going to do that. You still have to throw the football. Pat Swilling coming upfield, watch this. He doesn't get sucked inside. He goes back outside. He gets in Brown's face, and they just try to lob it, and you're not going to do it in this win. Well, you're not. That's right, but they got exactly what they wanted there. They want Pat Swilling to be aggressive, come up the field and take advantage of it, and Dave knows in quarterback terms that's called a short arm. Just didn't throw it hard enough. I didn't think so. Second and ten. Trailing ten to three, early third quarter. to first down as Albert Lewis drags him down. 11 on the play. You know, Callaway goes in motion here, and Al Albert Lewis is his man. He follows him all over the field. Well, that's right. Here's what the Giants are doing. You'll see Chris Callaway lined up on this side. Oh, here he is up top. The defender following him across Albert Lewis in man coverage. When they go across the field, the Raiders like to soften up their coverage. That gives Chris Callaway a chance to come underneath and make the catch. They almost invite you inside the 20 where the Raiders are double tough. One of the toughest in the NFL to score upon inside the 20, and there it is. They stuff the run for a two-yard loss on first down. There's, there's the thing we're talking about, Chester McLaughlin. He's on his way to the quarterback, and if a run happens to happen, you take it. Watch Chester McLaughlin. He tried, they try to cut him. They can't do that. He runs through it, makes the play. Swelling is right there with him, and that's a loss of two. That was John Elliott, who's a big man, trying to cut this guy, and he couldn't get him down, and that, that says a lot for Chester McLaughlin. He told us yesterday about Floyd Peters. He's a player's dream as a coach. He just tells you, get to the quarterback. That's what they do. Last time the Giants were inside the Oakland 20, they gained one yard in three plays. They lose two on the first down here. And Brown throws this one into the ground. 
But looks like Chris Callaway must have confused him right there because he wants to throw it to him. Oh, yes, Chris does a double move on him, and Dave is not ready for that. Watch him right here. Is he expecting to go outside? Chris goes back inside. He holds on to it. And he's letting Chris know. Get outside, Chris. 11 minutes left in the third. Now third down and 12 at the Raider 15-yard line for the Giants. They send uh, Sherrard and Marshall right. And to the left is Callaway. chance, but one that uh, you have to get when you're an uh, underdog and fighting a 3-6 season. This ball is thrown perfectly. Watch where the ball is. You see Marshall 86 right there. You got the defenders beaten. The ball's down and away. Only he can catch it. That ball hits him in the hand. There, that was a perfect pass. Should have been caught. So the field goal unit comes on for the Giants. Brown. Once Dave Brown here, he knows he's thrown it perfectly. Upset that the ball is not caught for the touchdown. 32-yard attempt by Del Weiss. Oh, it hit the upright and goes through. I love trick shots. I love them. <laughs> the carom by Brad Del Weiss, a knuckleball 32-yarder. This one will have plenty of yellow paint on it. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Even with the win there, it went pretty straight. Well, when you kick it as hard as Brad DeLuiso, sometimes this win can't affect it. And right there was a good illustration of it. The power kept it inside the, the goalpost and a chance to go through. Ismael at the goal line and didn't know if he was in or out, so he's going to run it out. And makes it to the 20-yard line. Timeout, 10.46, left in the third. Give us what we enjoy today. From the 20. Leading 10 to 6. Yes. Hardy Williams gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. A swarm of blue led by Michael Strahan, number 92. Michael Strahan just comes down the line of scrimmage. It makes an outstanding play. You don't get a chance to run it. What the, what the Raiders have to do, you'll see 92 Strahan come right across. Look at this. Right down the line. They pull. He goes right in behind and makes the play. Someone's got to come back and pick him up. You can't let him go down the line like that. Good part about that opening drive with the win was the Giants used only four minutes if you're a Giant fan. And now the Raiders want a long drive to consume the time against the win. Hostet with the throw. Bumps it off to Williams. Tackles and catches for five. Oh, that was almost a bobble right into the defender's hands. And that's what you fear as a receiver and a quarterback that win. Watch the ball when you see Jeff Hostetler drop back. He looks down the field. The one thing he does very well, knows where his outlet receiver is. He throws it. Now watch this ball if you can see it. Watch it move right there. Harvey Williams does a good job of staying with it and making the catch. What this offense has to do, which they like to do, they're gonna call, the officials are calling timeout for whatever reason. Thomas Randolph, uh, who made the tackle on Williams, leaves the field. There you can see the flags, and I tell you, as a quarterback, the one thing I hated when I ran on the field is hearing those flags whipping around. <laughs> it's uh, with the, well, now they've got uh, at least some lights on on the 25-second clock. That's more than the Raiders had at their hotel last night for three hours. They, they had a power failure right in prime time. Yeah, and so they're, they're blaming the Giants for that. They said, ah, they turned the electricity off on us over there, but... Uh, I don't think so. Was... The winds were gusting 50, 60 miles an hour yesterday in the New York metropolitan area. Mike White, he was uh, a late bloomer as a high school athlete, didn't play college or high school football until he was a senior, and then went on to Cal where he was he something keep of that everything. Time on the field by the field judge. Please turn the clocks off. Stay. You can't be just a jackrabbit to play that game. No. He said, I don't love that game. Play, play, you play, and you go great. You were <laughs> built and bred for that game. Oh. Third and five. Castetler sacked for the first time today. Oh, now that, that, that's wrong. Coleman oh, Rudolph got the sack, but then uh, some extra correction. 
spectacular. Michael Strahan going over there and knocking the other, knocking the offensive lineman down on the ground could have been easily called a penalty right here. Well, this Strahan has no business doing what he does here. Now, now watch, uh, if we can carry this long enough, there is a sack, but Strahan comes back across the field and, and just whacks. Is that Wisniewski? Watch this. Strahan's here. here. Look at this. I mean, that should have been called. No flag. Arthur Marshall and Thomas Lewis back into the wind gossip. Just stay away from these. Those are tough to handle. And finally touched by Folston, even kicked the head, but it'll go back to where the Raider player touched it, which will give uh, the Giants a ball when we return at the Raider 48. Nine, the Giants have the ball on the short one, actually marked at the 47 of the Raiders, trailing by four. Pat Swelling, one of those free agents picked by the Raiders and through the years. You can say what you want about Al Davis, but his uh, record is fairly impeccable in regard to picking free agents and making it work in the Raiders system. He knows talent, and he's very convincing in getting them to come to play for him. We'll get back to Pat right after this play. Jones for no game. But you know, we're talking to Pat Swilling yesterday, and you know, asking him about Detroit. He said it was, uh, the system. Uh, they asked me to do things I couldn't do. And then when you ask him, Dixon, well, why, why the Raiders? I mean, why, why was that choice? He said, Brett, Al Davis. He said Al Davis is committed to win football games and get to the Super Bowl. He said other people say we want to be competitive. Well, he's been on teams who were competitive that weren't competitive. He says I want to win, and this is the place to win. And he's got number nine sacks this year. Describe this receiver as his toughest receiver. Will go into the crowd, and there's another example, and pick off a tough catch, a first down at the 33. He always knows what he's going to get from Chris Callaway. He is tough down the field. He'll fight for the ball, and one thing he has, he had, look at that, another hand catch, and this win never drops the ball. Right here, you're going to see him good cut. Right here, catches the ball with his hands and still holds on it when the defender slaps at him. carry from Fredrickson a couple of yards before Fredrickson can get him out of bounds. I'm going to tell you something. This is, a, this is a great play by Hampton, but also by Fredrickson. Here's Fredrickson as a linebacker to be able to stop and get his sights set on Hampton. This is a tough tackle to make in the open field. The ball is thrown out here to Hampton. Now watch what Fredrickson 53 does. He comes out, see him get himself set, he gets square to the line of scrimmage, and then Hampton, that could have been a face mask because he's got his hand in his face, but that's a great job by both players. Six yards on the play. Oh, Sarar does not hang on incomplete. Up high, and it appeared he had stabbed it, but uh, juggles and incomplete the call. Right there, Dave Brown needed just a little more time. Chester McLaughlin getting in the backfield again, but here's Mike Sherrard. He's big and tall, goes up, almost makes the catch, but a good job by Terry McDaniel staying with him and knocking it free. McDaniel, the three-time pro bowler at the corner for the Oakland Raiders with four interceptions to lead the team this year. Had two last week against the Bengals. See where they mark this one. I'll First tell you, he down. stuck that right in his face mask, did he? I don't think Pierce was expecting it that quick. As soon as Pierce made his turn, that ball hit him right in the, right in the head. I think you call this anticipation by the quarterback. Aaron Pierce turns around. Oh, there it is. And <laughs> sticks those hands up there and says, look what I found. He hit him right in the face mask with it. He got those good hands from his daddy, Sam, who played uh, basketball at Seattle University back in the heyday of that program. for three, maybe four. Dan Reeves in his 30th year in the NFL. War number 30 with the Dallas Cowboys. And you know, one of his uh, great plays was that halfback pass. Uh, 
he threw 30 of them in his career for Tom Landry, and yet it's not a play you see often that he uses with his teams. Well, he has those plays in every week, and he looks for those opportunities to use them, and uh, if that opportunity arose today, I'm sure we could see a halfback pass by one of his players. Second down, Hampton. Trying to cross up the Raiders, looking for pass on second long, and here go the Giants inside the 20 into the red zone again, and today, here's how they have performed. Three times, including this one, inside the 20, seven plays, two yards, and that uh, equates into field goal tries. Well, it's not because they didn't have the opportunities to score twice. We, we saw a drop pass in the end zone, then we saw Mike Sherrard wide up in the end zone either time. They were not able to capitalize on it. check the penalty. Can I tell you something? With Marshall catching this ball, you've got to want to catch the football. And he wanted to catch this ball. He dropped one in the end zone, but this ball is fired in there. And to take a shot like Trap gave him and, help, and to hold on to the football, to me, that's an excellent receiver. It looks like it. The, the, Tom White is telling Dave, you're just short of the first down right there. He's, he's putting his hands just a couple inches apart. Well, the ball, it's, it's got first down. If, if, if yeah, he's the past play. the line. That's yeah. right. But there was also an illegal check or holding penalty on the outside. Oh, he's explaining which one is farther. Okay. That's what they're trying to figure out. What, how much further do I get? Take the I pass take the completion. completion. Oh, yeah. There quarterback. You they get a quarterback. <laughs> take the completion. <laughs> Absolutely. Sides, defense, number 36. Daniel, the cornerback, up to the top of the picture, had uh, positioned himself in the neutral zone. Yeah, Terry McDaniel wanted to get a, a quick start right there and, and give a jam to Mike Sherrard, but a little too quick. That goes for the Giants. They have the full 10 yards. They're not quite to the 10. Quarterback draw. Quarterback draw for a touchdown, 11 yards, giving the Giants their first lead, 13-10. They used only 350 on that drive. Five and a half minutes left in this third period, and with the win, Ismael will uh, take it at the 20-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, the quarterback draw works only because of man coverage. Mike Jones has to come over. Coach Fox, the defensive coordinator for the Raiders, upset over that call. And yeah. Dan Reeves... Yes, we finally get in the end zone for the touchdown. Didn't smile, though. Ten points in this third period for the Giants with the win, and the Raiders will take the win in the fourth. Here comes Harvey Williams. Around the Knocked out of bounds at the 25 by Felipe Sparks and Tito Wooten, a gain of five. Good job right there of Tim Brown blocking Felipe Sparks and, and giving Harvey Williams a chance to get outside and get that extra yardage, which is important here now going into the win and on first down. Williams leads the league in neck, doesn't he? <laughs> I'd say it's, it's oh. tough. It's, how many turtlenecks do you think he has on? Tell us all about 11. Two, Keith Hamilton, Ray Agnew, and others in the center of that giant defense. You know, when the team knows that you're going to run the football, or at least attempt to run the football, I think to play to the outside with Harvey Williams, where he picked up five on, on the one play, you don't want to run in the middle of this team. If you're going to run in the middle, then you better t have a fullback going up in there first to make this to set up the play. But there are so boxed in and that what that that box that they talk about right. you got seven and eight guys in there you've got to get the ball wide well the defensive linemen are playing run all the way and when the runner runs inside he really has no options if he goes outside at least he has a chance to cut back third and three the clocks are down again uh, continued problems there that's the delay Ismael the touchdown maker earlier to the right Brown in the slot right Completes for a first down. Willie Beeman makes the tackle, but Williams gets just enough. He needed three, got three and a half. 
A good job by the Raiders going in the win. You'll see Harvey Williams just come out and work on Willie Beeman. Just getting past the first down marker. Jeff Hostetter looking at him all the way. He knows he has man coverage and puts it in a good spot low and outside. Napoleon Kaufman comes in briefly, but he's sent right back out. Well, now he's out as a wing here to the right. Bottom of your picture. Out of bounds at about the 38-yard uh, line. Thomas Randolph on the coverage. Gain of seven. Let me ask you. Can I ask you a question? No. I want, I want you to be honest with me. All right. When it came to the time, and you see Hosteller out there now, and I know it's kind of a little strange for you, but when it came to that time, why did they keep you, do you think, instead of Haas? Well, I'm still trying to figure that out, Paul, but uh, I think the big reason was they thought that the team was in transition, and he was going to play a few more years than me, and they wanted to move on to Dave Brown and see if he was their quarterback in the future. up what appears to be a first down before Robert Harris makes the hit. In other words, what going back to what we said, you, you can only have one quarterback. The other quarterbacks aren't the one. And uh, they felt if they kept Haas, then with Brown developing, they'd have two quarterbacks. They knew your time was limited. That, that's exactly right. They knew if they kept... They'd had enough of the quarterback controversies, I think, around here for a while. And they want to try to try to avoid that. And they knew if they kept Jeff Haas-Settler that somewhere down the line in a couple years, they would have another quarterback controversy. First down for Hostetler and the Raiders at the 41. This is Hawk. He just brings a, a, your heart up uh, higher every time you see him run. Let's check out elsewhere to Greg Gumbel. It's making it tough on Miami. Here the Raiders are going with two tight ends, one wide receiver, a fullback, and a halfback. Jesse Campbell and uh, four other Giants can get him down. 22 yards for Kaufman. I said that this guy is going to light up this league. And, and I'm going to tell you something. When you see this run, this is supposed to be up the middle. Watch this. Nothing there. Now, the Glover and the guys get a good block outside. And watch what he does. He just makes it. Felipe Sparks leaves him alone and moves downfield. Look at the strength in this guy's legs. He is going to be one of the great runners in the National Football League. And he loves to carry the ball. Don't look at that 5'9". 180. That doesn't tell you anything. Number one pick out of Washington. And he's averaging this year 4.8 a carry. Trailing by a field goal. First down and play action for the Haas. Has to dump it off into the flat to the tight end lover. The other tight end cast gets a block and finally brought down by Marcus Buckley. Boy, was that great. I mean, Glover gets the ball filled and then Cash, the tight end, helps out. Well, this this is, Paul, this really describes the new Raiders, their offense. And let's look right here. Watch, here's Tim Brown. They've been running the ball. He's going to run here. And what the Raiders are trying to do is get a quick, easy touchdown right here. Hostetler drops back. The Giants are not full. Now he goes to his outlet receiver. Glover led by Cash. Giants do a good job, but they still pick up 10 yards. First down at the 21. To the 17-yard line as they continue to chew up the clock here. Now into the final seconds of the third quarter, and then the Raiders will have the win advantage in the fourth. Rushing defense for the Giants. They were seventh in the league two years ago. Last year dropped to 15th, and this year third worst in the league. You know, the one thing about, we talk about, excuse me, Phil, about, about Harvey Williams, he's an excellent back and he's having a tremendous year. But the guy I think that makes him have it is, is, is Napoleon Kaufman. He makes this guy work harder because Kaufman's ready to play. Harvey Williams. To the 10, and that'll be another first down. So the Raiders will have the win and have the ball on the 10-yard line of the Giants when the fourth quarter begins. First, these words, your local station. 
record to Ken Brick here at the Meadowlands, Giant Stadium, 78,000. And still got a 30-year waiting list for season tickets. And <laughs> Giants faithful, although disappointed by a 3-6 season, happy with that 10-point third quarter and the lead, however short-lived it may be. How about riding over here today? The kid that drove us over, he said, he said, do you have season tickets? He says, yeah. He said, the, he said, three years ago, I got on a 30-year waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> what are you he'll talking be, about? He'll be a grandfather before yeah. he's able to go to the game. <laughs> 30-year waiting list. Oh, it's incredible. It's first and goal. The full 10 yards for Hostetler and the Raiders to reclaim the lead. that have left the Giants in the last two years, many with a couple of Super Bowl rings, and here are those that are available unless signed before the end of the season this year. Pretty good names there. Well, basically, the whole core of the team is, is on that list. Lineman, Dave Brown, your receivers, Philipp, Philippi Sparks on defense, the best corner. Second and short, Brown, play action. Now he's in trouble and has to throw it away. Peak coming on from Pat Swilling. Swilling at 31 can still motor. Yeah, Pat Swilling was telling us yesterday, he goes, yeah, I'm in Detroit for two years, and everybody thinks my career is over. And I told everybody, I, I don't like to drop back in pass coverage. But then they asked me to hold blockers up so Chris Spielman can run around. He says, I rush the passer. That's what I do best, and that's why he's with the Raiders. Got that daily double in the first half of sack and a forced fumble. He leads the team with nine sacks and forced fumbles with three. Third down, two. be consumed. 1986 on their way to Super Bowl 21. The Giants and their quarter in the mid 80s. They need two. They get four on third down and the Giants move the chains out to the 32 yard line. That time the Oakland Raiders they set everybody and they, they missed one gap and that gap is what Hampton found and picked up the first down. They bring up Blitz. Here they come. Just take a look at them. They're all coming upfield. And look at this one gap where there's a defensive back into the hole. He's the only guy there, Joe King. He doesn't make the play. 31 yards today, Hampton, but uh, many of them, while well, not a high total, important as was that first down pickup. Herschel Walker, and uh, Walker just... Uh, yeah, not that hard charge into the line. A lot of soft uh, little moves and hoping something will open, and by nothing does for him. Well, Herschel Walker is one of those backs. I mean, you get him going left and right, he has no steam at all. He's got to get his shoulders square up the field in order to make some movement. Well, he's a, he's the perfect uh, example of an eye back. Likes to be seven yards back there, so he has a chance to make a decision before he gets the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Covered by Albert Lewis. Did you see what Albert Lewis did that time? He had no idea really that the ball was coming. He just went to Callaway. He went right at him. He saw Callaway put his hands up. And watch what Albert Lewis does here. But he's, he's looking at, at Callaway the whole time. See, he puts his hands up, so he goes and tackles him. So there's a ball there. That's great defense. There's Albert Lewis, and uh, many of the veterans will say that's what they watch, the hands of the receiver, and react to those. 13 years for a cornerback. <laughs> still playing in man coverage on the outside almost every snap. Third and nine with Marshall in motion. Marshall breaks a tackle, but not the next two men that meet him, and he's far short of a first down as Lewis and Trapp. Stop Marshall and the punting team on. Now the challenge to Horan to kick into the wind. 
Yeah, but Dick Horan, that first kick he had in the first half, went 45 yards into this win. Back to return, dangerous Tim Brown. Brown, uh, pro bowler again last year with his 89 catches and nine touchdowns. For the wind and the rain last night, he was going to come over here to watch a game that was here. Uh, I don't know whether it's high school or college to see how they fielded the ball. Look at this kick. Look at that and turn it over into the wind. That's remarkable to get. 20 yard line, Brown. And he's out to the 29. So Jeff Ostetler and the Raiders trimming by three on the field at their own 29. Lead 13-10 with 12 minutes plus remaining in the fourth. Herschel Walker injured on the kick return. Apparently all right. And Mike Horan, two kicks into the win, 146. That last one was 43 yards. The toss to Williams. Gets the corner. And a first down out at the 40. One yard line. You know, I, I told you before. I, you know, I just said get the get the ball to the outside. These guys are all bunched inside. These guys being the Giants. And look at this. They threw a little toss. Get excellent blocking at the line of scrimmage. Actually, Fenner doesn't even have to block anybody. And Harvey Williams gets to the outside. Picks up 12. Over 750 what? yards for the season now for Williams with a 74 today. to the 43-yard line. Well, it's going to be fun on the Tonight Show. That's <laughs> <laughs> on Johnny Carson. Oh. Harvey Williams. To the 45. Just two on the play. Third down, six. Tito Wooten made the stop. I don't care. When you when you have a team, I don't care how good your running game is and how good your passing game is. But it's very difficult to have a quarterback, any quarterback, Phil, especially as cold as it is down there in the wind and everything, to say, okay, we're going to run two plays, yeah. and on third and long, we want you to pick up the first down. Yeah, this, it, keeps, it gets the quarterback out of rhythm. It's very hard to play in these type of circumstances. Hostel, they're wearing a glove on that left hand, and plus heavy taping and protection for the broken hand. Giants, 17 yards. What's the Raider offensive line right here? It's a blitz by the Giants. They do a good job of keeping everybody at the line of scrimmage. Gives Jeff Hostetler lots of room to step in and throw. There you see Jason Seahorner coming off the corner. Hobbs looking for the sight of just decides, well, I better run the route. Hosteller does a good job of waiting for him to get open over the middle. Oh, Harvey Williams got Jason Seahorn by the face mask, and they should have called it. First time they mark it at the 38. Fake to Kaufman. Danny Boyd. Complete. Tim Brown. First down, 24-yard line, plus 14 for the Raiders. Watch what happens on this play. The Raiders running the ball pretty well. Watch up top. You got Rocket, the Rocket up top. Ishmael, he comes across the field. And my telestrator broke, so we can't see. But watch him up top. The Giants get full. Nobody's deep middle. He's past the secondary. Jeff doesn't see him. Throws the in cut instead. We'll take the 14 in the first down. Trailing 13 to 10 here in the fourth. Texas Southern. There's nothing you can do as a running back with this because Strahan comes down the line. Nobody blocks it. Watch this. They pull out. Fenner, I got to believe number 34, Derek Fenner, is the guy that has to block Strahan. When he doesn't block him, there's just no place to go. I think what you also see there, Paul, that play was designed to go right. You're not supposed to cut it back. You cut back, you run into trouble right there. A loss of uh, two plus.
tackles are the Giants as Kaufman uh, caught at the line of scrimmage, makes about four or five on the play. See, this is this is what he adds. Kaufman adds to this football team. Now, any other time when you're down when you're down to second to twelve, you know it's a throwing down, especially with the receivers you have here. But with this guy in the backfield. He becomes the guy that can pick up on a draw play, to pick up 12 yards. I almost wonder why they don't use him more. I think as time goes along, we will see this guy in the backfield a little more. Critical third down call. Third and six. Pass that leg on the scramble. And slides down at the 16-yard line and a flag down. As he went down, one of the Giants seemed to scrape the face mask. Felipe Sparks. Oh, they're going to call that a 15-yarder. Oh, he doesn't even hit the face mask, I don't think. It looks like he hits him on the shoulder right there. Is that a 15-yarder? Let's take a look. Let's see. You see Hostetler scramble. Watch. Personal foul. to the goal. First down. There is no face mask. Felipe Sparks just hits him with a four, with his open arm across the head. That's almost like a head slap. Take a look at it right there. When you hit him, come on. That, you, don't, you don't think that's... I, mean, I know you don't like Haas, but... No. I, mean, <laughs> hit. I, think, hit. I thought the blow was on the shoulder and just a little glancing blow on the head right there. But so in light of Haas Stettler's history and the injury in Denver where he was hit in the throat, and he quickly appealed and got the major call. First and goal. Williams. A yard. That's all to the six-yard line. Jesse Campbell coming up from safety to help on the tackle. I still think that right down here in this situation that the Raiders are better off running the football in Trail 13 to 10. Seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Williams, touchdown. Huge hole. Untouched Harvey Williams for his eighth touchdown of the season, Russian. Uh, finally, they heard what I had to say now about running the football. Get that ball down the field, out to the outside. Don't try to run inside. Look at the hole. Yeah, watch what. Look at the right side of that Raider line. Greg Skrepinek, Kevin Gogan just pushing the giant defensive line inside. Harvey Williams doing a good job and bouncing it out for the easy touchdown. Nice when you can run in there and not even, not even have a hand put on you. Six yards for Harvey Williams. And now Jager's try for the point. And it's 17-13 Oakland. Felipe Sparks with a personal foul on the way time today the Giants have to work against the win they've managed that part well and know the troubles that come with anti-win two punts and a fumble on the other three they start from their 23 trailing Oakland by four comes up from the safety to make the hit at the 29-yard line. Well, the Raiders are missing a guy, Eddie Anderson, I mean, a tough hitter, and Hoskins is the other guy. They love, I mean, we're seeing more teams with tough safeties. The guys will come up and make the hit. Oh, absolutely, and you talk to the Giant coaches, you talk about the Raiders' safeties, and says what they really are is linebackers with speed. They just, all they're out there doing is tackling people. Second down for Brown. has the fourth sack today by the Raiders. They're 33rd of the season. And after this week, might well be leading the NFL. Phil, he was looking at Callaway, wasn't he? The first guy he looked at to the right, and yeah. then there's nobody there, so he's, now he can't find anyone. Right, here's, here's Callaway down at the bottom. You can see him covered. Then he looks up here to Mike Sherrard. Both receivers, he has no chance to throw to either one of them. You're going to see it right here. He looks to the left, nobody open. Really, Dave does a good job right there of, of just going ahead and taking the sack and trying to get it on third down. One on the sack, four total, third down and eight. Does this one complete to Callaway? It's tough to catch a cab in New York, but uh, this Callaway, cab Callaway, they call him, makes another as Brown uh, writhes in pain as he kept it. 
waited as long as he could before delivering a perfect throw. I'll tell you what, this is just a heads-up play. Chester oh, McLaughlin oh. is the guy that hits him after after he throws the football, but that pass is perfect. It's a really good job by Brown standing there by himself a little extra time, and wow, does that hurt. That should be illegal. illegal. A man that big is that fast and strong and hits you when you're just saying, come and get me. Dave Brown's back underneath center. This is... Hand it off. 27-yard line against the hand. His way into Raider territory to the 47. Gain of six. Greg Bickert makes the tackle. Derek Hoskins again, the safety coming up twice down this draft, trying to make a tackle on Rodney Hampton for a short game. But the one thing you when you meet Rodney Hampton the first time, the first thing is strikes you. This is a big man, and he's hard to bring down the open field like that. 43 total yards rushing for Rodney Hampton today. Of Jerry Bull. Well, you're talking about how big Rodney Hampton is a couple of years ago we were doing a run to daylight, and, I, and I, I saw he comes down, and that's the first time I really met Rodney Hampton. Uh, the, you know, I'd see him in, in a football uniform, and I looked at him, I thought he was some a linebacker or something. <laughs> and I, I, who's this guy? And they said, that's Rodney Hampton. They get out of here. This guy is huge. 5'11, but 230, looking for his fifth consecutive thousand yard rushing season for the Giants. No one's ever done that. No one's ever had more than two other than Hampton. but that's only a plus two and leaves the Giants two yards short of the first down on fourth down and Dan Reeves into the win. He said, looks like he's made his decision. He's going to go for it right here. He's putting in the call to Dave Brown. Well, it does, you know, the this record's not very good. So what difference does it make? You need a touchdown. You don't need field goal. And they're going to go for it here. Only three minutes and 15 seconds left, so... This is it. They make it. Still hope for Giant fans. If they don't, the Raiders, great position to run out the clock. Nate the Callaway. No, it's Gerard. It's Gerard on the first down at the 40-yard line. Good job by Dave Brown and Mike Gerard right there. Tough coverage. People are all in by Brown. Dave Brown's face. He still stands in there hesitates and throws it outside. Here we're going to see Mike Sherrard, man coverage by Terry McDaniel. Terry McDaniel looking back in the backfield, trying to watch the quarterback. That gave the opening to Sherrard. You see Sherrard just concentrate on that ball and get his hands up. The only thing he's worried about is catching the football. Two and a half left, fourth quarter. Giants trail by four. well out of bounds. Herschel Walker was the closest giant, but he was well covered. You know, the good thing about Dave Brown on that last play when, when he threw the ball up, uh, to Sherrard is that when you're 6'5", you can take that two or three step drop, Phil, and be able to look over the defensive lineman. Yeah, that's, that's right, Paul. Good point, and that did enable him to still look outside even though the Raider defenders were in his face. With that Curtis Martin in New England as they leave Miami. He's over the 100 yard mark again. Rookie runner for the Patriots. Marshall in motion. Brown able to get away. Scramble. And pushed out of bounds at the 30 yard line. That was a valiant effort by A. Brown. What a play. What they got set up here. They're trying to bring Arthur Marshall across the formation and get his man that's covering him picked by all the traffic. You're going to see the fake here. Arthur Marshall going. The Raiders see it. Brown does a good job of pulling it down and showing for a big, tall quarterback he can move pretty well. Andre Bruce had him shy of the first down, but he was able to kick free from that tackle, scramble for the first down. He has 22 yards rushing today, the 11 most important on the quarterback draw for a touchdown. First down at the 30. Walker, the receiver. 
Well, it looked like he might have had Callaway all by himself down in the middle of the field, but, you know, it, it's a lot easier from up here to take a look at it. But watch what they do, the offensive line. They just move everybody to the outside. And look at now, all Brown has to do is step up. You don't even see a white shirt. Herschel's there, tries to guide the ball into him. But had he looked downfield to his left, which he had time, Callaway was wide open. This play will probably take it to the two-minute warning. for the Giants as Brown goes down after a two-yard gain and the two-minute warning. Oakland leads by four. First down play. Here's Chris Callaway. Watch him come up here and run the in cut and how wide open he is. Dave, I mean, Dan Reeves told us Dave Brown, a young quarterback, right here freezing. He's got to slow his eyes down, stay down the field a little longer, and look at Callaway right here. The Raiders losing. He's wide open. Young quarterbacks have a hard time of being patient sometimes and letting the play develop. That's what he's got to get better at. So third and eight at the Raider 28. Oakland leading by four. Brown. Play made by Terry McDaniel. Ooh, Mike Sherrard leaping high, and McDaniel breaks it up. I mean, if they went on fourth down before, you know they're going now. They're inside of two minutes. They need a touchdown, not a field goal. But I'll tell you one thing. If Mr. Trapp, 37, catches that ball, nobody catches Trapp. The one thing that's been pretty impressive right here, the Raiders, who've been all over Brown today, they know he's going to pass. The line is doing a good job Giants of protecting really him. Giants use one of their timeouts right here with 1.55 remaining. Oakland, fourth down and eight for the Giants. A do-or-die call. So, Phil, stick your head in the huddle and tell us what you'd... First thing I would do, try to draw them off sides with a long count, but I would move a receiver, try to create a traffic jam somewhere with the Raiders so you can get an easier throw. No quarterback draw here, huh? I would, hold, I would think not. It's not a hold, it's a tip ball. The ball is tipped. And it might have been Chester McLaughlin, I'm not sure. But on a tip ball, there is no flag. And it's going to make these people awfully mad. Well, the Raiders already seem to have heard the good news. Here comes the ball up in here. That's Chester. Chester McLaughlin. The ball was deflected. No pass interference. First down, Oakland. Number 91, Chester McLaughlin. Look at this. He's got his eye on the quarterback, and then bang, he gets up in the air and tips the ball right there. That's an excellent call by the officials, though, to come back. You know, when you see that thing, this crowd went up, and now they're all going home. Wait a minute. Where are you going? There's a minute 49. Yeah, but only one timeout left for oh. the Giants to stop the clock and uh, made it complete. As uh, the Giants, uh, a worthy opponent today, but the Raiders continue to roll, apparently, unless uh, they make a horrendous mistake. And it's just going to be a kneel down for the Haas. Well, the Raiders talked about, Dick, they were telling us yesterday that they changed this team around for these type of situations, coming back east or in the playoffs, play games where they have to run the football. That's what they did today here. That's one of the reasons why they're going to win the football game. And what the, what the Giants can, can do here, the only thing they can do is wait until third down to call the timeout. And by that time, it's really going to be about, what, 10 seconds or so? And the beauty for the Raiders in the schedule making, even though they've had to come back east three or four times this year, they have now four home games at San Diego and Seattle. They have all fair weather games the rest of the way. Well, 
coach Mike White said to us, "Hey, look at this is a very important game. This we got to keep. We've got to keep the momentum going. Uh, and you know, I don't care. Brown is frustrated. I know that you know the young man is. He played a, a tough game, a, a very good football game. But the one thing the Raiders had to do is to keep their momentum going. This this game here, I I feel when you were talking to the coach and the players, it's it's not a turnaround game for him, but it's a continuation game for him. And and, and if they'd have been knocked off here, that sets a you know a team that's supposed to win. That hurts more than anything. Absolutely. You look at these games, this is what makes a championship team. When you go and play those games where you know mentally and emotionally you can't be fired up, you've got to go in there and still take care of business. They did it last week in Cincinnati. Today they're doing it against the Giants. Well, what the, what the Raiders did is, is, I don't know if they took a timeout or not, they took it down to one second. And they, and they called the time. The Giants took their last timeout. With 25 seconds left. And uh, fourth down. And you can bet they're going to punt the ball. And you can bet they're going to send everybody. Well, Dave Brown may get a chance to throw one final desperation pass. But the problem with this is unless you get the ball at least at the 50-yard line, is any man's arm strong enough into that <laughs> wind to get it deep? That's a good point. I mean, the wind honestly has died down quite a bit here in the second half. And the... The one thing, if it was still blowing hard, you could hope for the center who would be snapping in the wind that maybe the punter could uh, drop the football or something like that. But the wind's died down, and that shouldn't even be a factor now. And what you do here is on a punt team, this is what I, I call short yardage punt situation. You watch all these guys are going to be all in along the line of scrimmage. There are no wide receivers out there. These are all linebackers and linemen. This is tight punt formation, and you just seal everything to the inside. If they're going to block it, you got to get from the outside. Thomas Lewis is back for the Giants. Raiders double-checking their blocking assignments. And Jeff Fassett gets it uh, away. And over in, a flag down. Lewis, uh, time ticks away as he stays away from the ball. And finally covered by Rob Holmberg, 13 seconds. Did you see what Lewis did? When that ball was tipped, Lewis went, went to go for the ball because now with the, with the Raiders touching the ball, if he picks that ball up and he runs all the way down the field to the 20-yard line and fumbles the ball, the Raiders get it back. It's still their ball where that thing was touched. So, he, I mean, it's like, like a, a free, free play. Chance, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. He was looking. <laughs> Procedure against the Raiders. Now we got to Giants have decided to make them punt this ball again. Illegal formation. Kicking team. The left side of the line is not up on the line. Five yards, still fourth down. And Mike White's team, this Oakland Raider team, is going to be interesting now. They've got the Cowboys and and the Chiefs and uh, that uh, very contentious Western division of the AFC, Kansas City and, and Oakland. One of those teams is going to be a wild card. Well, that, that's the important thing winning this game here today. You're right. Kansas City, 8-1. and one. You, can't, you, you cannot afford to fall two games back, and you do not want to be a wild card uh, team in these playoffs because it's too hard to go on the road and win two games or three games to get the Super Bowl. Uh, block or nothing now for the Giants. Yeah, that, that, that puck before it took 12 seconds. Ooh, they came close, and Gossett booms it out of there to Lewis. Gets out of bounds at the 36-yard line with three seconds remaining. 48-yard punt, six on the return. Lewis, who broke a foot in the uh, first game of the season, finally back for the Giants. And Dave Brown now, there's a... A short list now for plays in this spot. You know, I, I just think one other thing about free agency, we showed all those guys and, and all these guys that are up for it, Phil. I, I, I really think it disrupts the team because the Giants historically, they just do not negotiate during the season. They may be secretly with a couple of people with their agent, but most of them they don't. These guys are frustrated. Yeah, they are. Uh, I think they're all wondering what their future, where they're going to be, what's going to happen with the team. And it does leave an unsettling situation for the players, Paul. Brown heaves it as far as he can. Sherrard, but at the 16-yard line, pushed back, game over. Wow, if he'd had a little more field, or less field to work with, that could have been shocking. Sherrard.
yard, steals the pass, but the Raiders go home with their eighth win of the season. Hostetler's return to the Meadowlands is successful by a count of 17 to 13.